Welcome. In some previous videos, I went over the process of installing FFmpeg on a Mac Mini with the Apple Silicon M1 processor. So I actually have two videos. One of them is downloading and installing the Intel version, which runs under Rosetta 2. And the other video is for compiling FFmpeg for the Apple Silicon processor. So I'll put links in the description to those videos, and I'll put links to my FFmpeg playlist and also a page on my website where I have some FFmpeg content. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at some benchmarks I did to compare FFmpeg compiled for Intel and FFmpeg compiled for Apple Silicon on this Mac Mini M1. And although I don't think it matters, this has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive. So I did four different tests and for each test I created four files using FFmpeg. So the first one here I took a series of JPEGs and turned it into a video. So I ran this with FFmpeg with the software encoder, FFmpeg with the hardware encoder. The top ones here are for Apple Silicon and the bottom ones here are for Intel. I renamed FFmpeg to be FFmpeg 86 and that's for like 386 or x86. Next I resized a 4k video to 1080p using H.264 and again I used software encoding that's this here libx264 and I used hardware encoding which is h264 underscore video toolbox. This third test I created created a timer and I did a video on this that you can find in my FFmpeg playlist and what this does is it creates a timer that you could then import into another video editor. So usually what I would do is take this, create it here and import it into Final Cut Pro. And the size on this is pretty small. It's 240 by 96, so it's a small resolution. And then lastly, I resized the same train video to 1080p using H.265. Now H.265 is supposed to have better compression than H.264, but I'm using 4400K bitrate for the H.264, and I'm using 8700K for H.265. And I completely understand that that doesn't make sense. Ideally, you would have a lower bitrate for the H.265. But here I'm mostly comparing the FFmpeg binary compiled for Intel and the binary compiled for Apple Silicon and then I'm also comparing the software and hardware encoding. So let's take a look at the benchmarks. I have this spreadsheet I made here and I actually put a chart in this to be kind of fancy. It's not great looking but it works. So on the left here column A we have time lapse resize to H.264, the timer as H.264 and resize as H.265. And I have it broken down here for Apple Silicon software encoding, Apple Silicon hardware encoding, Intel software encoding, and Intel hardware encoding. So I had some interesting results here. So for resizing the file to H.265, and that file I don't know if I mentioned is a H.264 video. So it's 4K H.264. I shrunk it down to 1080p and encoded to H.265. You can see here the fastest is Apple Silicon with the hardware encoder. The next fastest is the Intel with the hardware encoder. The next fastest is the Intel with the software encoder. And then the slowest is the Apple Silicon with the software encoder. So I don't know why this is like this. Something is optimized on the Intel version that isn't optimized on the Apple Silicon version. So if you want to record as H.265 using the software encoder, using the way I compiled it, you're better off using the Intel version. Now there might be a different way I could have compiled it that would speed it up. I'm not sure. So next we'll look at this timer. So I had some strange results here too. The fastest was the Apple Silicon software encoder. The second fastest was the Intel software encoder. Then we had the Apple Silicon hardware encoder and the Intel hardware encoder, and those were about the same. The Apple Silicon one was slightly faster, but in this case, the software encoder was way faster. And there's another interesting thing here too. So for these other tests I did, I used the same bitrate that I set in FFmpeg. Let me show you that. So when I ran these, I had the bitrate specified here. When I ran the timer with the hardware encoder, when I set the bitrate, the quality was terrible. So what I ended up with was not only these files being longer to encode, and I'm talking here about the hardware encoder for Apple Silicon and Intel, the files are a lot bigger too. When I set a lower bitrate on those, the quality was awful. I don't know why. So let's take a look at two of these. Let's look at the software encoder and the hardware encoder. And these look pretty much the same here. We have the two timers. Now let's look at the file sizes. So you can see the software encoder is 4.2 megabytes and the hardware encoder is 33.6 megabytes. So that hardware encoder is not able to easily deal with that weird resolution. So I'm not sure exactly how that was encoding. It didn't appear to be falling back to the software encoder because the software encoder was very fast. So now we'll look at the resizing to H.264. And this is backwards from this chart here. I'm not sure why it does that. I'm right here. And this one we had the software encoder. And this one we had expected results. The Apple Silicon hardware encoder was the fastest. Intel hardware encoder was the second fastest. Apple Silicon software encoder was third. And Intel software encoder was fourth. So this last one is time-lapse, and this is where it took all the JPEGs and created a movie out of them. 
The fastest was Apple Silicon Hardware Encoder. Second fastest was Apple Silicon Software Encoder. I'm guessing that's because the FFmpeg had to read all those JPEG files. Third fastest was Intel Hardware Encoder, and fourth fastest was Intel Software Encoder. So I did four tests here, and you could come to four different conclusions based upon which test you looked at. On the time lapse, Apple Silicon was faster than the Intel for both tests. For resizing to H.264, the Hardware encoders for Apple Silicon and Intel were faster than the software encoders for those two. But the timer, the software encoder was way faster on Apple Silicon and Intel, and the hardware encoder was slow and had low quality. And then resizing to H.265, the Intel software encoder was faster than the Apple Silicon software encoder. So I thought these were some interesting results. So I think the takeaway here is that you need to look at your situation and run some tests on your system to see what's the most optimized for what you're doing, especially if you're doing automated work. If it's a one-time thing, it may not be a big deal. I think this test also shows that the Intel version running under Rosetta isn't really all that bad. So I think some people might be watching this wondering if they should use the Intel version or compile for Apple Silicon. And I think you need to look at your own situation, what you're going to be doing with it. I certainly think the Intel version is very capable, especially if you're using the hardware encoder on it. Now, if you're doing a lot of time lapses, it might be worth it to get the Apple Silicon version compiled for your system. And this is shortly after the Apple Silicon processors were released. So FFmpeg may be updated and more optimized to run on this system in the future. So this could be irrelevant in six months from now. It's hard to say. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.